construction projects regularly cause controversy. But the ones we are looking at could potentially trigger wars, have resulted in people being imprisoned, and are allegedly responsible for the deaths of thousands of people. These are the world's most controversial megaprojects. And you are watching part two. Number two, Qatar's controversial World Cup. Our next project concerns the world's most watched sporting event, the World Cup. In July 2009, tension was in the air. All eyes were on Zurich, where it was being decided who would host the 2022 World Cup. Japan and South Korea jointly hosted in 2002 but now wanted to host the event separately. Also eager to host was Australia, which had never done it before. Another critical contender was the United States, where soccer was becoming increasingly popular. But the winner was Qatar. The country's population is half the size of Sydney and a quarter of New York. The land with only one stadium so far was big enough for a World Cup game. The Qatari population was not known for its interest in football. You can't even play football in Qatar in the summer. It's too hot. The footballing world smelled like a rat. Allegations of bribery were leveled at FIFA and its then-president, Sepp Blatter. Before the ballot, two members of FIFA's committee who cast votes for World Cups were caught offering votes for cash. Investigations were underway in France and Switzerland, and a U.S. indictment accused three FIFA executives of taking payments. However, a FIFA probe cleared Qatar of any wrongdoing. In defense of their selection, the World Cup is a global competition, and it's unfair that a Middle Eastern has never been able to host before. FIFA Sepp Blatter said, the Arabic world deserves a World Cup. They have 22 countries and have not had an opportunity to organize the tournament. So why does Qatar want to host the World Cup? This is mainly because of its desire to move away from oil. The state became wealthy from oil but is aware that it will all run out one day. The country needs to make money from other areas, and tourism could help replace the money made from oil. Qatar is a place where Westerners can experience a warm and tropical climate during the cold winter months. The World Cup will open the country to the entire planet, and hopefully, this event will motivate them to return and encourage others to visit too. The most significant controversy for Qatar has been the treatment of its workers. Eight stadiums needed to be built in 12 years and the country invited workers from much poorer countries to make them. The Guardian alleges that over 6,500 migrant workers have died in Qatar since the country was awarded the contract. To put this into context, 21 people were killed during preparation for the 2018 World Cup in Russia, and 8 died during the Brazil World Cup construction. The workers in Qatar were also subjected to inhumane conditions, working extremely long hours in sweltering conditions. The Qataris dispute this figure of 6,500. Nasser al Qatir, the CEO of the 2022 World Cup, said, We have consistently gone out to say that these numbers are absolutely false. We do not recognize these numbers. These numbers are not contextual, they're not nuanced enough. This is something that we publish on the website, it's transparent, and it's open for everybody to see. Three workers have died building World Cup stadiums. Nonetheless, the number may even be higher than 6,500. The figures only account for migrants from India, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Sri Lanka. These numbers did not include workers from the Philippines and Kenya. Despite all these scandals, the Qatar World Cup is completed successfully. All eight stadiums were amazing after construction. In March 2021, the Danish, German and Norwegian football teams wore shirts protesting Qatar's human rights abuses during World Cup qualifying games. Norway has since failed to qualify for the competition, but there is now pressure on the Danish and German teams to refuse to play. Outside Germany and the Nordics, the footballing world has been eerily silent. But who knows what happened in November 2022? Number 1. Russia's Gas Pipeline Nord Stream 2. 
Until recently, this next project played a vital role in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But let's first go back in time to see how the Nord Stream 2 project was developed and why this $11.3 billion pipeline will likely never be implemented. The story began on November 22, 2005. It was a historical day for Germany. The country had elected its first ever female chancellor, Angela Merkel. She would rule Germany for another 16 years, but it was a project devised by her opponent in that very election that is putting Germany into hot water today. Merkel's opponent Gerhard Schroeder was chancellor before his defeat of Merkel. He suggested an offshore pipeline between Russia and Germany for his election campaign that year. Germany imported a lot of gas from Russia, but this gas had to be transported through other countries, including Ukraine. This meant that Russia and Germany had to pay many transit fees to these countries. Schroeder's new proposed pipeline would run directly from Russia to Germany under the Baltic Sea. Despite it being her opponent's idea, Merkel ran with it, and construction on the pipeline began. Nord Stream 1 travels from Vyborg, near Russia's border with Finland. It travels down the Baltic Sea until it reaches Lubman in northeast Germany. This new pipeline was a huge success, and there were plans to expand the project by adding another channel immediately. In 2015, all parties had agreed to build it, and with a budget of $11.3 billion, the construction of Nord Stream 2 was ready to begin. The route of this new pipeline starts in U.S. Luga near Russia's border with Estonia. Once it enters the Baltic Sea, it eventually meets up with Nord Stream 1 and runs in parallel with it, finishing in Lubman. But at the time, not everyone was happy about Nord Stream 2. In 2016, eight EU governments signed a letter of objection. The letter mentioned the pipeline's potentially destabilizing geopolitical consequences and can pose certain risks for energy security in the region of Central and Eastern Europe. Crucially, Russia had gone to war with Ukraine in 2014, and by then, significant tensions between the countries were still brewing. This war between Russia and Ukraine worries the US and its European allies. Ukraine has been an essential ally for the US since the end of the Cold War, and its independence is strategically necessary to prevent another Cold War. However, as recent aggressions by Russia increased, the relationships between Russia, Ukraine, and the NATO states worsened. Various calls for de-escalation and diplomacy failed and led to Putin's terrible decision to invade the whole of Ukraine on February 23rd of this year. This is clearly a violation of Ukraine's sovereignty, and an invasion of this scale hasn't been seen in Europe since World War II. Before Putin invaded Ukraine, Merkel defended Nord Stream 2 as a purely commercial project and believed that the pipeline in Ukraine could still be used even after Nord Stream 2 was complete. In response to the recent events, Merkel's political party condemned Putin's war and expressed that the approval of Nord Stream 2 was clearly a mistake. Today, the pipeline is nearly complete, but Germany's new chancellor, Olaf Scholz, agreed to finally halt the project as a response and part of Western sanctions. As relationships between the West and Russia have reached their lowest point in decades, it does not look like the $11.3 billion Nord Stream 2 pipeline will ever be used. So let us know your thoughts on the projects mentioned in this video. Are there any other projects we could have highlighted that you think are more controversial? Let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video.